I'm fixing the rotten wood in the companionway and I'm covered in this stuff. So we are here with Mike at his shop and we are getting ready to get the rigging all set up for Little Miss to start sailing and I'm really excited. Mike's a really cool guy, he's got a lot of credentials and we'll talk about that later. So come on in, take a look and um, see us prepare this. How's everybody rigging? doing? I'm Mike Sapala, owner operator of Sapala Spars and Rigging here with Aubrey. Going to make up her standing rigging and kind of explain the process today. First thing that we're going to do essentially is uh, I run all of the same size cable because it's on a spool at the end of the bench. So you have two different size cable in your standing rigging. We're gonna do the 316s first. Uh, size of cable has specific fitting and then has a specific die set which goes inside of the machine. This is a wire technic rotary swage machine that's operated off of air and hydraulic power. What we do is essentially put the pin in the fitting, put the fitting in the fork. And we're making standing rigging. It's a pretty precise deal. It's a pretty big deal to get it within, an, you know, exact in my opinion. But so what we're, what we're going to do essentially is uh, we're going to start and we're going to make the first end. We're going to make the first end for the first piece. I'll anchor it along with the other piece, measure it, mark where it needs to be cut for the other fitting and go from there. Uh, we've got our fitting and we've got our bare clean end of the cable. Look down in the fitting and make sure that there isn't anything there. Not all fittings are marked. Some fittings are marked. This fitting is marked with a swage line that's right there where we know where the cable enters and, and stops. Your top fittings, are they're called aircraft forks. And uh, these are actually made uh, for the aircraft engine on an airplane to move back and forth. But they also got used on old school boats like yours. And so the reason that you try to put the right size pin in the right size hole. A, if the pin's too big, it doesn't fit. Uh, and then you end up, somebody puts a drill bit through the hole and then you don't have enough meat to support the end of the hole is one. And then the other, and you can't necessarily see it that well on, on these, but the hole gets egged out from a smaller size pin being in there. And that's what happened here. You can actually see on this edge a slight bit of loading and so you'll point load either the tang or the pin the smaller pin inside the bigger hole is also not totally uh, engaging the radius of the pin or engaging the radius of the fitting so before we start we're just going to put the cable in mark the cable pull the cable back out put it up against the fitting and basically mark where the depth of that cable goes into the fitting. So tell me what swaging is. So swaging by definition is cold roll forging. Uh, forging is the joining, by definition is the joining of metals. Uh, shackles get kind of hammer forged. They kind of, they melt the metal and there's essentially a mold and they kind of smack those two molds together and that flash cools the metal. It renders it uh, in that form. Cold roll forging, uh, we're doing it really slowly. We are reducing the outside diameter of this fitting and each fitting has a, has a swage spec. They are our preferred manufacturer of fittings. We used Hain because they're good people, because Hain is a family company. Carl Hain, that's his company. Jennifer Hain, she's a customer service specialist. There's two other guys, Tucker and Brett, that we deal with. Somebody answers the phone every single time. There's never a problem. Uh, and they work really quickly to get us what we need. And so you've got a swage dimension table. The wire diameter that we're using for you is 3 16ths. 
What that means is this beforehand should measure this and after really needs to measure within that specification. What it really is is a 10% reduction in the outside diameter. So if you crimp or reduce too much metal, it can actually break the fitting off inside. And if you don't reduce enough metal, it can pull out. This is a piece that we've basically just cut in half, but you can still see area around the cable and you can actually still see the actual individual fittings if you uh, look at it closely. Measure it at the same time, so I'm gonna bring it all the way down here to the end of the bench and anchor it with the old, which is the upper back stay leg, okay? See the swage line and mark it. Handy dandy Felco cutters, not cheap. You cut the piece of cable, so we're cutting 5 16ths or 3 8 You gotta put it on the ground. Cut the back stay to length. We'll end for end everything at the same time. So, back stay's cut, it's laying here. We're gonna pull the new wire off of the spool. to never be used again. There's no arts and crafts projects you can do with old? Some people ask for old pieces of cable, like if they're doing lifelines or something like that. Oh. Um, this dog has a sticky butt. Yes, he does have a sticky butt. Um, 3-1-6 cables, non-magnetic. It's rendered passive. All 3-1-6 stainless steel is rendered passive when it's made. Uh, it, it has an outside passive layer of chromium. Um, this is a magnet that I just got off of the toolbox, it's a magnet light, new cable, and new fittings won't stick to a magnet. But your cable, look at that. And I'll show you the greater and lesser degrees of so failures. How do, how do I know if I need new rating? So first, you call a professional. <laughs> Second, for those who are uh, doing what you're planning on doing and basically going out and, and doing your thing, all we do is look at things and we know how they're supposed to be. I've been working on enough masks over the last 25 years that I know what's supposed to be there and I know what it's supposed to look like. So a trained eye on a rig is one good way to find out if you have issues. And then another way is for you yourself to familiarize yourself with your boat. Point out the possible failure spots and, and there are inherent failures in everything, you know, an engine, tires, uh, everything has an inherent failure point and so does your mast and so does your rig and so does your standing rigging. And so um, the biggest thing with standing rigging that you want to look for is the, the tarnish in the cable, the magnet sticking to it like we saw, uh, and then swage fittings themselves, and I have a bunch of, of failed swage fittings here. They're prone to cracks. So uh, so you, you want to look at your rig, you want to look at your standing rigging, you want to look at the, the spreaders, you want to look at any possible cracks or, or any possible issues in all of the metal. Uh, swage fittings themselves are prone to cracks. It itself is, feels like it's cylindrical like it should be. A lot of times a center strand will break or pop and the cable will end up having a bump that's in it. That's a telltale sign that you have less than all of your 19 strands. There's only 19 strands in any of these pieces. It's a good sign that one of your 19 strands has popped at least. Um, the next thing that we look for is just uh, any undue corrosion. The tarnish that we had said, this is a relatively corroded fitting. Um, and this fitting has a crack right there. So there are, in general, two types of cracks that we'll see in fittings. We'll see a longitudinal crack or a crack that's running in line with the fitting and then we'll see a circumferential crack as well which is a crack that's running around the radius in different industries uh, when you when you weld stainless steel it ends up you, you're you're melting the metal and you're adding another metal inside of it and so that heat kind of causes a, a a little bit of a scar around it when you when you weld stainless steel you get a little bit of a of a burn to the outside where the torch burn the unaffected area and they actually make uh, uh, they, they make devices that are electrically and chemically active that will clean and polish these welds. You'll see it a lot in the food service industry or stainless steel tanker trucks and things like that. Um, and what that does is that heat 
has caused porosity and uh, and it's caused the metal to change state which will uh, render it magnetic or impassive again so a passivization cream on your swage fittings is a good thing just keeping them clean in general uh, e even a metal paste or a metal wax will work just fine it's tedious not many people do it um, but it will increase the light. This is, this is the worst case scenario. Uh, basically this fitting had many cracks over time and then the cable actually pulled out while these guys were under sale. Uh, and this is something that somebody like myself would have been able to see long before um, the, the actual failure It's also going to be more difficult. You're pulling more surface area. If you're pulling on that, you're pulling more surface area. It ends up being more drag and it ends up being more load on the shiv and it ends up being more difficult to pull. Bigger is not always better. So, so you were telling me that you used to test boats and we talked about the puck and I thought that that was so interesting. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that tell everybody about that also uh so that was that's more towards the racing side of things and uh so i've been lucky enough to be um involved in a, a lot of different one designs uh, the etchels class the j22 class the j24 class uh, mum 30 class far 40 so you know. so i'm sure that being able to sail two boats and have all the information come back and see who got there first and who did it better was a great way to learn and to really hone your skills. So you are probably one of the, I don't wanna, you know, put you under the gun or anything, but probably one of the better sailors out there having been able to experiment in that way. But fortunate is what I'd say. Yeah. I, I would never uh, declare my skill level. Uh, we I'm, would wanna I, do that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think that anybody who thinks that they're the best at sailing has still got a lot to learn and so, that kind of attitude can be very dangerous in this sport. Mm -hmm. um, so I would basically just consider myself very fortunate to have very, very generous benefactors. So what I'm hearing is that I've chosen very wisely for the person <laughs> who is rigging Miss Lone Star 3. So um, I've had a lot of you out there say that um, what I'm doing is unsafe, that I should have spent a lot more money on my boat, but I have uh, Mike here, and he is an expert at what he does, and he's making sure that the boat is very safe. And can you tell my fans and friends and family why and how we're making this little boat safe to sail? Well, so uh, first and foremost, um, new standing rigging, new cable um, that was obviously flawed before that we showed you, and you, you guys will see that kind of stuff. And uh, an expert eye on the mast before the mast goes up, you know, uh, um, I think that's a big thing, making sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. That's, uh, for lack of better terminology, the pins are, are properly spread and, you know, so you're starting fresh with what the boat came with. Mm -hmm. um, you're not, uh, you're not reinventing the wheel as far as your boat is concerned. You're basically uh, just like, uh, just like you wouldn't go put uh, big swamper tires on, on a little mini Cooper right. and little teeny tires on a big truck, you're not gonna go and drastically change the way that your boat was designed and the way that your boat successfully sailed for a lot of years. You're essentially putting new tires, the same new ti same tires on the car that you had on the car before, same standing rigging on the boat that it had before, done professionally, she's seen it done in front of her with two nice clean machines, nice clean line, um, and I think that the big thing is that your, your ambition is to learn and your ambition is to use this boat maybe not as a stepping stone but definitely as a learning platform and that's, uh, that's a good attitude to start what you're trying to do with. That's a very good attitude that's, uh, um, that, like I said before, anybody who says in this business that they're an expert, you're not. You're learning, just like I'm learning, just like you're learning. So everybody's got to kind of figure it out on their own. Um, surround yourself with good people. Um, get knocked down, you know. Cut yourself, get bruised, get battered. Um, 
find something that you'll say that we're not going to do this anymore, you know, because that's going to happen. You know, you got to you got to find your limits and find your boat's limits. And I think that um, I think that seems like the path that you're on. It seems like you've listened to to the voice of reason, maybe yes. as far as some things are concerned. Trying. Uh, you know, people have a huge, huge misconception about what this actually is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, you know, one of those terms you said, you know, idiots have been sailing around for a long time. Yes. Idiots have been sailing around for a long time and getting away with it. And people haven't been killed or people haven't been shipwrecked. Um, you can do this wrong. It's a lot like a, a lot of other things. You know, you see guys who, who spend uh, tens of thousands of dollars on golf clubs and they're shanking balls left and right. They probably spend more money on balls than they do on golf clubs at some point. Sailing's no different. I mean, you can put tens of thousands of dollars on something that only costs a couple of thousand dollars. And, and in a lot of aspects, you've seen that that's necessary. In a lot of aspects, you've probably seen that's not necessary in certain things. You know, the, the technology has evolved way beyond the, the what the boat actually needs and what we actually need in order to, to make this thing happen. Right. And, and so... Yeah, and I really appreciate you um, understanding that I'm coming from a minimalist kind of stance. I want to learn from, I don't want the best gear starting mm -hmm. out. I don't mm -hmm. need the fanciest depth sounder and the best chart plotter. I want to learn the nuts and bolts of it. You know, you know what a depth sounder tells you? How deep the water is. That's it. Right. That's it. doesn't tell you that you're going to run aground. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And it doesn't tell you that you're not going to run aground. Right. It tells you how deep the water is. What frustrates me most is the assertion of an opinion that I just don't consider valid and I'm allowed to do that because yeah. you don't tell your doctor how to take your tonsils out. You don't tell your doctor how to do open heart surgery. <laughs> yeah, this is true. You don't tell your doctor, you don't tell the, anest the anesthesiologist how much gas to use to knock you out. You don't do those things <laughs> and no, I'm not saving lives. Well, maybe we are saving lives at some point because if a rig goes and falls down on somebody's head and I'll show you some of these failures... As we walk outside, you know, it can, it can be life or death. And we don't, you know, we don't, you don't want to scare people to that aspect. You don't want people to think that way. But people need to respect that. Yeah, it's something people yeah. need to be taking seriously. And I take yeah. it very seriously, and that's why I'm here with you. That's, and that's the, I, I feel that. And that's good. That's good. That's, a, that's the best approach. Um, you know, fear breeds respect, and respect makes you better yeah. all the way around, no matter what it is. Cool. Thank you so much. And you guys, if you need any rigging done here in the, what is your, <laughs> there it is. There it is. If you need any rigging done, um, any deliveries? www.sapalaspars.com. I'm Mike Sapala, owner operator, Mike at sapalaspars.com. So um, I'm very thankful to have met you and thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure. And if you guys need any rigging done up here in the Northeast or any deliveries, I understand you do deliveries. Deliveries, racing, whatever you need, give me a call. If I can't help you, I'll find somebody who can. All right. We'll see you guys next time. This is a box of failures. Go over this a stuff. box. I have a box of failures. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs>